Today I will present the option trading strategy Iron Condors. These are a very good and commonly used strategy. Iron Condors consists of two vertical spreads and vertical spreads are characterized by having the same number of long as short options on the same underlying with the same expiration date but with different strike prices. There are two different types of iron condors. They are short and long iron condors. In this video I will present both of them. A big difference between these two strategies is the opening process. Short iron condors are open for credit. This means that you receive money when opening short iron condors and long iron condors on the other hand are opened for a debit so you have to pay to open. The amount paid or received is also called premium. Just like the name implies, short iron condors are an overall short strategy, whereas long iron condors are an overall long strategy. But more on that later. In my previous strategy breakdown video, I presented credit spreads and mentioned debit spreads. Iron condors are nothing else than a combination of either two credit spreads or two debit spreads. Short iron condors are a neutral or range bound strategy and long iron condors are a price indifferent strategy. I will discuss the exact meaning of that a little later in this video. This is how the payoff diagrams look like. The orange line shows the payoff of the strategy at expiration and the blue line shows the payoff sometime before the expiration date. The setup of a short iron condor is basically exactly the same as the setup of a bull put credit spread and a bear call credit spread. So you buy one out of the money put, sell one out of the money put at a higher strike price, then you sell one out of the money call and buy one out of the money call a few strikes above that one. And the difference between the strike prices of the puts should be the same as that of the calls. And the green crosses on the payoff show the payoff at uh, the position of the long options and the red one shows the position of the short op options. The setup of a long iron condor is just the setup of the short iron condor but inverted. So instead of the long options being on the outside, the short options are. An out of the money short put, an out of the money long put at a higher strike price, an out of the money long call and, and finally another out of the money short call at a higher strike. The easiest way to understand this is to look at the payoff diagram and the crosses. Let's move on to the profit and loss of iron condors. As visible on the payoff diagram of short iron condors, they don't profit from a move in a certain direction. As long as the underlying price doesn't move too much, they will be profitable. But in the case of a big move, they will end at a loss. Max profit is achieved if the underlying price stays between the short strikes, whereas max loss is achieved if the price moves and stays beyond one of the strike prices of the long options. This is the other way around for long iron condors, as these profit from a move in a big move in any direction. They'll end at a loss if the price does not move enough in a given time frame. Max profit is achieved if the price moves further than the short strikes and max loss occurs if the price moves less than the long strikes. But both of these strategies have limited risk and limited profit potential. No matter what happens with the price of the underlying asset, the spreads won't profit more than a set amount. Now I want to present you what exactly affects max loss and max profit and how you can calculate this. If you're trading in a broker platform, any broker will show you what your max loss and max profit will be. If your broker does not do that, I recommend changing broker. It is nevertheless always a good idea to be aware of what influences your max profit and max loss. You need to do two calculations to find out the max loss and profit. The first is premium minus commissions and the second calculation is a little bit longer. It is with the width of the strikes multiplied by 100 minus the premium 
and plus commissions. I will explain these calculations with an example in a moment, so don't worry if you don't understand them yet. The result of the first calculation is the max profit of the short iron condor and the max loss of the long iron condor. Thus the second calculation is unsurprisingly the max loss of the short iron condor and the max profit of the long iron condor. For our example I will choose the strikes 92 and 95 for the puts and 105 and 108 for the calls. The premium received or paid is $72. Note that I only wrote $0.72 and that is also the reason why there is a multiplication by 100 in the second calculation. Option prices are stated in quantities of 1 but normal options always control 100 shares of an underlying. Therefore you always have to multiply that, that price by 100. I will neglect commissions in our example as they don't contribute to the understanding of these calculations. The result of the first calculation is therefore just the premium. So the max profit for the short iron condor is nothing else than the net premium taken in, so $72. This is also the max loss for our long iron condor. The second calculation is a little bit more complicated. First of all, we'll have to find out what the width of the strikes is. The width is the difference between the strikes of either the puts or the calls. So the difference between 95 and 92. In our example, the width is thus $3. The width should always be the same on both sides. In other words, the width between the puts should be the same as the width between calls. The next step is multiplying these $3 by 100. Then we have $300. Now all that's left is subtracting the premium from that, so $72 from this. The result is $228. This is the max loss of our short iron condor and the max gain of the long iron condor. As you can see, the risk to reward ratio is much better for the long iron condor. But this is compensated by something else that I will talk and present to you very soon. Now the only point left to find out are the break even points. Luckily these aren't hard to find out. All you have to do is add the credit or the debit to the inner call and subtract the credit or the debit from the inner put. In this example the two inner options are the ones with the strikes 105 and 95. After adding and subtracting $0.72 we found out that the break even points are $105.72 and $94.28. The further the two vertical spreads are apart from each other, the greater the result of the second calculation becomes. This means that max loss becomes bigger for short iron condors and max profit increases for long iron condors. A wider iron condor will also lead to less premium taken in or paid. This is a good thing for long iron condors as they are cheaper but a bad thing for short iron condors as they take in less credit. Another way to increase the premium is to increase the width of each side on each side. These calculations may seem complicated, therefore you can be happy about the fact that you practically never will have to do them yourself. Once again your broker should always show you these numbers. Let us speak about the market assumption for iron condors next. Both these strategies are neutral strategies as neither of them profits from a move in a certain direction. But they both still are different kind of neutral strategies. Short iron condors are range bound strategies, meaning that they profit if the underlying price stays in a range and the long iron condor is a price indifferent strategy, which means that it doesn't matter in which direction the underlying price will move as long as it moves. Hopefully this makes sense. 
but to understand it even better, we will take a close closer look at the payoff diagrams. I'll begin with that of a short iron condor. As you can see, the price of the underlying can either move up a little, down a little, or stay exactly the same. All of these scenarios will lead to max profit. So iron condors do have quite a big profitable range. This makes them rather high probability option strategies. This is also what I meant with a compensation for the poor risk to reward ratio. Long iron condors on the other hand will end at a max profit if the underlying price makes a big move. This doesn't happen that often. If the price only moves a little in either direction, a long iron condor will still end at a loss. Therefore long iron condors usually are a lower probability strategy than short iron condors. The further the options of a short iron condor are out of the money, the higher the probability of profit becomes as the profitable range increases even further. The opposite is the case for a long iron condor. Another very important aspect to consider when trading iron condors are the Greeks. I published a video on options pricing and the Greeks not too long ago. You may want to check it out if you don't know what the Greeks are. I will leave a link in the video description below to check it out after this video. The short options are closest to the underlying trading price for short iron condors and thus they are more dominant. Therefore short iron condors are an overall short strategy. This is the other way around for long iron condors and thus they are an overall long strategy. This table shows the impact of the Greeks on different option positions and I divided it into short and long options. The short options are the relevant ones for the short iron condor and the long options are the relevant ones for the long iron condor. Now I walk you through the impact of each Greek on the two strategies. Let's start with delta. Delta measures the change of the options price for a $1 move up in the underlying. So obviously a short put will profit from a move up and a short call will lose value from that move. Therefore the plus and the minus. Furthermore, a long call will profit from this move up, whereas a long put will lose some value. So delta is normally somewhere near zero for iron condors, as they don't profit from a move in a specific direction. The impact of the remaining Greeks is the same for both short and both long options. Vega measures the change of the options price for a move up in implied volatility or IV. A minus indicates a loss of value in short options for a rise in implied volatility and a plus means that this position will profit from a rise in IV. This also means that short positions will profit from a drop in implied volatility. To profit from implied volatility it is a good idea to enter short iron condors in times of high volatility and long iron condors in times of low volatility. To recognize how high or how low volatility currently is, you can use IV rank. IV rank shows the current state of IV compared to historical figures of the same underlying asset. Theta, also known as time decay, is is a very important Greek. It measures the change in the options price for time passing by. A plus symbolizes a gain and a minus a loss. The short positions have a plus which means that short iron condors literally profit just from time passing by. If the underlying price doesn't move at all, iron condors would profit from time decay. Long iron condors, on the other hand, lose money from this time decay. The amount of time decay doesn't change in a linear way, but becomes higher the closer you get to expiration. In other words, the amount that iron condors profit or lose from time decay 
becomes higher the closer you get to expiration. The last relevant Greek is gamma, and it measures the rate of change of delta. A large gamma means that delta will change very rapidly and that the options price will lose more and more of its value for every one dollar move in the wrong direction. Furthermore, the profit for every one dollar move of the underlying in the correct direction will become smaller and smaller. Gamma increases the closer the positions are to expiration. And Rho can be disregarded for now as it's only relevant for very long term option positions. Now let us look at some example iron condors. I have an example for both short and long iron condors. This first example is an example of a short iron condor on SPY, a very liquid ETF tracking the S&P 500. At the time of entry, SPY was trading for around $247. The short strikes for this iron condor were 251 and 243. The blue lines are the positions of these short strikes. The entire range between these two blue lines is the max profit zone. As you can see, SPY was actually quite volatile, volatile and there were some respectful price swings in that time. Nevertheless, there, these price swings weren't big enough to create a loss in this iron condor. Except for a very short time, the price was in the profitable zone all the time. In my opinion, this shows the high probability aspect of short iron condors. My next and final example is a long iron condor in QQQ. This time the long strikes were 129 and 135 and QQQ was trading for around $131.5. The blue lines once again represent the strikes and everything beyond these were the max profit zone. As visible, the price of the underlying made quite a big move in a relative short period of time and it didn't pull back, thus leading to a profit in the long iron condor. Last but not least, I want to give you some of my personal tips that I use and that I learned from my trading so far. I will begin with short iron condors. Short iron condors are in my opinion a very good strategy. They are a neutral version of the very good strategy credit spreads. Additionally, they are a high probability strategy and ideal for high probability option selling. I recommend trading short iron condors at a probability of profit of around 70%. So don't go too far or too little out of the money. It is important to always take in a certain amount of credit before it even is worth it. So no matter in what account you are, you should always take in at least $40 of credit. For bigger positions, it is a very good idea to send out a good till cancel take profit order at about 50% of max profit as it's often not worth the wait for the remaining profit. Just like I said earlier, try to enter short iron condors when IV is high, so when IV rank is over 50. Finally, I had the best experience with entering iron condors around 30 to 45 days before expiration, but this can easily be changed a little. Now let us move on to long iron condors. Long iron condors are good for big expected moves. This can happen during special events or announcements. So iron condors can be used when you expect the underlying to move big, but you don't know in which direction. The more narrow your long iron condor is, the higher the probability of profit for it becomes. Optimally, you should enter iron condors in a low IV en environment, so when IV rank is below 50. But honestly, I do not have a lot of experience with long iron condors 
as I just really don't trade them. I prefer short iron condors over long iron condors. That is mainly due to the high probability aspect of them. If you want to know how to specifically set up iron condors in a broker platform, I will leave a link to a video presenting that in the description below. But for now, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and learned a lot. If you want to learn more about iron condors, other option strategies or just trading in general, you can check out my website tradeoptionswithme.com. I only offer 100% free education on options, the market and more. Hopefully I'll see you there. Otherwise, tell me what strategy you want me to present next. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more trading videos like this one. Thanks for watching.